What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. As you probably know already, Plex has released an update to their privacy policies. And in today's video, I am going to talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to approach this the best way that I possibly can. But before I do that, I do wanna disclose, yes, I do have sponsorships from Plex. They do support my channel, they support the videos I make, so I definitely am, am appreciative to them for that. I also have affiliate links in the description down below that also helps my channel. So, uh, you know, again, I appreciate it for that. But before all of that, I've been a Plex fanboy since the day I started my channel. I have always made Plex videos, I probably will for the foreseeable future. And you can say that I'm a Plex fanboy and I'm probably biased in a Plex's corner. But just like the first video I made regarding the Plex privacy policy changes, I am gonna be as unbiased as possible and I am gonna be looking at it from a consumer standpoint, a consumer who might be worried about, you know, their data being collected or, or sent to a mothership or exposed somehow. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna keep that level head and be as, as neutral as I can. So even though, yes, I am a Plex fanboy, I'm going to try to keep that contained. With that out of the way, the elephant in the room. Okay, so I've been thinking about this, how to do this video and not upset people. And the best way I can think of is to just come right out and say what my thoughts are and then explain why throughout the video. And my thoughts are with this entire situation, even from the beginning, a little bit from the beginning, is I think there's a lot of overreaction. But the funny thing is, is that overreaction was actually called for because the way this whole thing came about was, you know, Plex's release of, we're removing your option to opt out of data collection. I mean, I was like halfway to the store to get my own pitchfork. I mean, it was pretty like scary. So the way they released the original update saying, we're gonna change this, you're not gonna have an option. It was a scary email. It was a scary way to tell people, you know, something that is, you know, constantly running on their home network, something that they used all the time, something that has root access to all of their, you know, precious data is all of a sudden gonna be, you know, a big eye in the sky type of thing. And they don't have any option to get away from that. So that caused a reaction, which caused a reaction, which turned into an overreaction, and that's where we are now. Now I sat down with Keith, the CEO, on an Aplex call, and I talked to him about some of the concerns that I had and why I understood they were existent. Uh, we did come to a few conclusions. He spit some ideas, I spit some ideas, and you know, ultimately, with that in combination with you know some of the response from the the forum users and the Plex forum, you know, the Reddit threads going on, you know, all of that taken into consideration, Plex decided to kind of back down a little bit, you know, back off the original idea and change it to what we see released yesterday. And that is to basically be completely transparent and offer still some sort of like opting out option. And I've been kind of waiting for this for a while because I wanted to see what they were going to do, how they were going to implement it. Okay, so the Plex website now has a privacy preferences site uh, that explains everything that they collect and it gives you a little checkbox to, you know, opt out of some of the data collection. And while I like this page, I have to say that, like I said before, I was expecting something different. I personally thought that when you you know, or when they were gonna update this, that this is gonna be added to the Plex Media Server Management screen itself and not be, and I'm gonna use this term, I don't wanna be harsh, but not be buried in the Plex website. And really the only reason why I think that uh, this actually deserves the term buried is because you have your opt out option is on this website only. You can't find this in your server management uh, anywhere, at least I can't, I haven't been able to find it. So in order to do this, you have to be able to find this page and then read through it. And then like halfway down the page, there's an opt out button for some of the data. Personally, I feel like this is a little buried. Uh, I, I wish it would have been executed differently. I thought it was gonna be executed differently. It's not, maybe in future revisions of Plex it will be. Uh, this isn't necessarily like an end all be all thing for me. It was just, you know, I had expectations or what I thought were supposed to uh, be expectations and it turned out not to be that. So um, it's like taking a drink of water, expecting soda, and then, you know, it tastes weird because you were expecting it to be something else. That was probably a terrible analogy. But you get what I'm saying. So anyways, moving forward, past all of that, past my expectations and everything, I wanna talk about why I think this is still kind of an overreaction, uh, just from what I'm seeing in the forums. And on one end, I understand some of the reaction to it. On the other end, I don't. Because if you actually take the time and kind of read through this data collection information that they give you, and they're telling you, you know, what they're collecting, I think you would realize that ultimately a lot of this data 
is just the necessary data needed to function as a media server. And not all of it, I mean, if I had to throw an arbitrary number out there, maybe like 80% of it is necessary, you know, to function as a media server just to keep it running. But that other 20% or at least 19% of the other 20% is used in order to better the usage experience overall for Plex. Not necessarily for, you know, right when you're using it, but for future developments, future updates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as possible. I don't wanna talk too much. I know I talk a lot, but I'm gonna try to break down each section here a little bit and cover a little bit and talk about it just a little bit uh, so you kind of understand the viewpoint that I'm coming from before we go into the comments and start, you know, flaming me. Okay, so the first one is account information. They store general information about your account and your subscription plan if you have a Plex Pass. This includes your plan type, uh, how you purchased it, how much you paid, and that's it. They store this information to tell them how you learned about Plex when you signed up or purchased a subscription or you clicked on you know, Google search results or came in an email, et cetera. Okay, so that's pretty basic. Every service is gonna collect this, this type of stuff. I mean, that's, that's basic stuff. Then they say they collect data about specific versions of applications that you're using to connect to their services. Then they say they collect data about specific versions of applications that you're using to connect to their services. Okay, again, now they're listing things like Plex for Android or Plex for iOS and what version you're using. Now this is pretty generic stuff. I think everyone out there that has a service that's gonna require clients to be used are gonna wanna know what clients are actually using it. Because if client C doesn't get used nearly as much as client A and client A gets used way more than client B, then you're gonna focus all of your development, bug fixing and attention to A first before you get to B and then before you get to C. It's completely understandable and I don't blame them. And in fact, I don't even know how you could operate without doing that, without knowing what you know, uh, clients they're using to connect. I mean, there's a lot of things within Plex where they have to know how to transcode, how to serve your media, so they, they have to know what client you're using. I mean, this is, this is necessary. But building on what I just said, they, they said that they collect information from the device that you're using to access Plex services. And they actually said it right here, collecting the information allows them to invest engineering resources to improve our applications on the platforms that would benefit the most customers. Okay, here's a primary example, right? I use the Xbox One, and I'm sure plenty of people out there use the Xbox One to connect to Plex. But I guarantee you, if without even seeing their data, a ton more people use Android-based devices. Fire TV or the King Box that I reviewed. Okay, these things run rampant. These are most widely used, I would assume, aside from iOS devices, of course. But as far as like home entertainment, there's a ton of these little Android boxes out there running around that I'm sure are just flooding the market. And if they have the data to collect to say, hey, you know, this is an Android client. This is, you know, it's going to run in at this resolution. This is going to be, you know, running off this software version or whatever, you know, that's going to allow them to be able to, you know, engineer or update, you know, specifically for those clients because those are one of the highest client base. So I think I'm beating a dead horse here. I'm going to move past this. Next up, we have network session data. When you connect to Plex services, we also collect some information about your network and your connection. You know, this sounds a little bad, but they list things like, are you using a secure connection? What type of network connection are you using, like Wi-Fi or Ethernet? Uh, they look for your IP address, your session length and your playback session ID. The only thing that I think that people would find concerning here is they log their IP address. I'm not saying that it is a concerning thing to be worried about, I'm just saying that's probably the only thing. But again, this goes back to like root level services. It's like if you wanna serve a client, you wanna take you know media A and serve it to client B, you're gonna to have to know where that client is. You have to know where they are located you know, on the internet in order to give them information. They don't necessarily have to log that or keep that permanently, but they at least have to know where you are. Now this next one is where I think a lot of people fell off. And this is, I actually was like, whoa, playback data. In order to provide the best media viewing experience, we need to collect information about how our products are being used by our customers. Collecting playback data allows us to understand what types of content our customers are watching or listening to and how that media plays. Director Transchrome video or audio codecs is collected to improve playback support. Now they decided to generalize the data. This is actually something that me and Keith talked about. They wanted to make sure that they're not keeping specific information about what media you're playing. Instead, they're thrown into like buckets of generality. They're saying instead of, you know, your, your file being 10.6239 gigabytes in size, it's gonna be 10 and a half. Instead of your movie being, you know, two hours, 53 minutes and four seconds, it's three hours. Now again, this kind of playback data, although I don't know if they necessarily need it to function as a media 
a server in order to you know actually provide you with the service they maybe they do maybe they don't i have no idea but it is being generalized and it still gives them an idea of how people are using their services how they are consuming media you know how long they're playing something what kind of files they're playing and overall that is still going to be helpful for plex and the reason of this is really simple if they notice that everybody starts using a specific you know codec or everybody's watching a certain type of media then again this all rolls into where they need to focus their attention for example if a certain codec for whatever reason is slowing down a media server maybe it takes more cpu horsepower than it should and they're noticing that more and more people are using this codec then that's where they can step in and say okay let's focus on this one thing this one codec and let's make this better because this is something that people are going to be using this is something that people are having issues with or this is something you know whatever that allows them to focus where they need focusing and honestly i, I kind of agree with all that but there's more stuff to it a little bit down that's called optional playback data and this is actually the stuff that they're willing to allow you to opt out of and there's a good reason to that specifically duration and bitrate and resolution those could be more closely linked to a media file so if somebody was worried about being fingerprinted per se uh, into finding out you know what media is on their server you know these could be identifiers that could help potentially lead to them being identified even though they are being generalized so you know even if that was a potential it would be almost impossible to do so but still these are some other key factors that you could or you you would need in order to be fingerprinted so you have things like bitrate duration resolution offset and completion status now this is kind of like this is where they allow you to opt out this little button right here you know buried halfway down the screen this is where they allow you to uncheck the box and opt out of this optional playback data now, i think this is good to at least have some kind of option to be able to you know opt out of all of the data collection but at least some of this data collection being opt out of uh, but again, I would have loved to see this on your actual media server management screen. When you log in, you know, to your to your media player, you're looking at your media files, you're going to server settings. You know, I was hoping to see some sort of like a privacy tab, something that would have this here, uh, there on that page that you could click right there and know exactly what you unchecked. However, I have to play devil's advocate here, and I have to say I kind of understand why it's done this way. And the reason why is because basically all of this information that they're giving us all of this you know page this wall of text and examples and everything that they're giving you of things that they have to collect either to you know uh, function as a media server or to further better the experience for plex users all of this information is already going to be collected so opting out of this data is only like five different things that you're actually opting out of out of all of the stuff that they've listed just as an example this is like five of those things so i think from plex's standpoint i think if i had to guess that their mindset here would be well let's not give them a blind opt-out option making them feel like a false sense of security or something like you know i'm opting out of all the data collection just by this magic checkbox here instead they're giving you this entire page kind of making you scroll through it and read everything that they do collect that's mandatory in order just to function and then you get to that section that you can opt out of that way you fully understand that this is the optional part when you when you click this button your only option or you're only opting out of this specific data and i understand why they're doing this it's that good boy attitude it's like i don't want to not necessarily lie to my customers i just don't want to give them like this false sense of security you know with the magic checkbox that actually doesn't do anything basically like windows 10 you know you, you check the box say i want to be private does nothing so even though i wish it was on the server I understand why it's here. Now, furthermore, the Plex uses your IP address to roughly estimate where their customers are using the service. I don't really have anything to comment on that. I don't know why they have to know where their customers are located. I can say that they are keeping this according to their website. They're keeping it a rough estimate, you know, like state and their city and their country. Um, but I don't necessarily know why they have to know where you're located. I can't say that for sure. The only thing that I can do, again, I'm not a Plex employee, so all I can do here is, a, is speculate. The only thing I can speculate is it might have something to do with advertising and not in the terms of selling your information to advertisers, more along the lines of if they want to target, you know, maybe a, a new feature or they want to do a, a, an update thing or something and they want to target, you know, per region, like on something like Google AdWords, doing this would allow them to know where they can focus their AdWords accounts, their, you know, their, their targeted advertising and get the most impact on their customers. So let me give you a little example. Let's say they want to run like a Plex Pass, 
you know, free trial again. And they wanna target people that don't have Plex passes already or just don't have Plex already. And they say, you know what? According to our data, there's a ton of people in New York that uses our service. Granted, there's a ton of people in New York, but just bear with me. So then they can say, well, there's a bunch of like-minded people in this city or this state. Let's target our advertisement here with Google. So when you go into your Google AdWords, you say, where do you want your advertising to go? So they click there and then boom. That new promotional campaign that they're trying to run is gonna be specifically targeted to this one area because they already know that this is a heavily populated Plexin area full of people that are like-minded, technologically advanced, you know, whatever people, and they want to approach those specific people. Again, speculation, don't know, not a Plex employee, but that's what I come up with. Okay, now the next one is anonymous data. And in addition to the information described above, Plex collects anonymized data when the users interact with our services. This includes settings data, feature and interaction data, and server slash library data. Now, when I first read this, I was like, oh, 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 oh. but then they start to explain it a little bit down below. Now, interaction data, collect anonymous feature interaction data allows us to understand what parts of our products are being used on a regular basis and when our customers may be having trouble discovering certain features. This information is not tied back to an individual and is only useful when viewed as aggregated statistics. An example, how many people performed said action? Do they click the home button? Do they click the search button? Or if somebody plays a movie from the pre-play screen, they collect whether or not they actually press play. And if they do press play, is it a movie? or TV show. And to get down to my favorite one, the server slash library data. This was the eyebrow that I'm like, oh. In reality, that's actually not that bad. Okay, for example, they say, is the server published? Well, yeah, your server's online, you're watching it, so that's obvious. Number of the user accounts that have server access. Again, not only is this anonymized, that's, that in itself is pretty innocent. It's like, how many people have access to your server, too? What library type, this is very generic, movie, music, TV shows, etc. What language is it in? What agent are you using for that library? What scanner was used? Total number of items in the library, which that could, hypothetically, let's say somebody had a movies section, a movies library, and their movies library said like they had 50,000 videos, movies right? If this was tied specifically to a username and was traceable back to somebody, I could see where that might throw up a red flag somewhere if maybe they got, you know, like a, a warrant to search their database. Like, really, this guy has how many movies? Maybe we should knock on his door. But again, they're saying it's anonymized, so I don't see any problems with that. I just, you know, these are things that pop into my head, and these are also things that I assume most people think about, or at least you know, initially think about. And then they say a number of items in library based on unique combination of container, video codec, and audio codec. It's kind of a weird thing to collect, but if it's anonymous and it's not very specific, whatever. And timestamps indicating the last time it was added and played for each unique combination of container, video code, or audio codec. So yeah, these are some interesting points for them to collect. I'm sure they have their reasons or they would not add them in. Uh, I don't know exactly why. I'm pretty sure a lot of you might brainstorm why, but in the end, none of this is like detrimental. You know, I, I'm not scared of any, any of this data. This is all pretty basic stuff. And that actually brings me to the bottom of the page. That's it, that's what they collect. So this brings me to my conclusion. And forgive me if I repeat myself. I do this a lot, it's a problem. But I wanna start off by saying that I think Plex, they shot themselves in the foot twice. The first time is when they told the internet <laughs> that they were going to remove their option to opt out of telemetry, especially on the heels of Windows 10 coming out and doing the exact same thing and giving everybody a huge scare and being basically the topic of the internet for like a year. So they told the internet they had no options and that just caused a backlash. But the good thing here is that they did listen to their community. They backtracked a little bit and they came out with this, this new and revised you know, version of their privacy policy. And the second time that they shot themselves in the foot, actually I think that might be too harsh of a statement. The reason why I say that there's a second time because I feel like the second time they were, they, they went to the opposite end of the spectrum. They said, you don't have anything, any information, nothing. And then, okay, we're gonna just like vomit everything that we have onto you. We're gonna give you all of the specific data collections. You know, we're gonna tell you and show you everything that we're going to collect. And to a lot of people out there, they're gonna be able to look at this, this list and they're gonna say, okay, you know, that's not bad, that's not bad, that's not bad. And, and they're gonna be able to go through it rationally. But I think a lot of other people, they don't see it like that. I think a lot of other people, they see it as just a list that's long. 
And this leads to that overreaction that I was talking about earlier, where you see a large, long list full of all these data collection points and you just, you, you kind of panic. So while I use the phrase, they shot themselves in the foot the second time doing this, I praise them for it. And I appreciate the opportunity from Plex in order to look at all of those data collection points to know exactly what they want to know from me. With that said, and I know I, I mentioned this before, uh, I want to see some option, some way, somehow, I wanna see this page integrated into the Plex server itself. I don't want you to have to go to, you know, the Plex website or find subsection this or link there or go, you know, click through. No, I just, you should be able to go to your server, click on server settings, go to the actual server tab, and then on the left-hand side where you see all your options, I wanna see privacy. And to be honest, this is what I expected. When I was telling people to wait till the 26th in the comments, I was expecting a, a media server release. I was expecting a new version to download, to install, to get a new updated Plex web interface that had all of this incorporated. Instead, they released this Plex privacy update page that was kind of a separate deal from their servers. So if you wanted to change this, you have to go here to do that. So that actually caused a little bit of confusion and maybe a little bit of a disappointment on my end. Even though now I kind of understand where they're coming from, I still would like to see it implemented directly into the Plex Media Server. Because as it sits right now, the only, the best word that I could come up with that, just, that describes what's going on with this whole thing right here is buried. Okay, ultimately it's not hard to find. I mean, you can get to it relatively easy, but because it's not part of your initial media server setup screen or, or it's not part of your setting screen, to me that's buried. No matter how easy it is, that's buried. So ultimately at the end of the day, I'm satisfied with what they released. I think there's a few points where I don't necessarily understand why they need that, but I'm not worried about it. But I also, strongly feel, and you can disagree with me if you want to, but I hope you don't, that a lot of this information that they are collecting is necessary to function as a media server. I would go as far as to say that other platforms like MB probably collect 80 to 90% of the exact same stuff just because they have to function. Because you have a server here, you have a client here, your client has to know where your server is, so that means they have to know where your server is so they could forward your client. Client wants to play a video. They have to know what client is actually playing, what they're requesting as far as a video type, what video type the servers actually has. Can this handle it? Do we have to transcode? What's the network speed? I mean, these are things that have to be known in order to function as the robust media server that we have today. Sure, there's a few things that are probably put in there from other services that they have, things like trailers or extras on, on movies that are maybe directly related to those kind of services that you know weren't originally there. But in the end, most of these are service related telemetry points that I don't find intrusive personally. I just feel like maybe it was a little overwhelming to see a long list and it's not until you actually read through it and break everything down and realize it's actually not that bad. And that's ultimately what this whole thing comes down to is it, it's not bad. It's just a bunch of information. Personally, I'm over it. I'm done talking about it, I'm done covering it. I think this whole thing was an overreaction. There were some very valid points in the beginning. Plex addressed those valid points. Maybe Plex has had a, a short history of making some of the wrong decisions as far as execution, but they fixed that. Uh, again, there are a few things that I like to change, but hopefully they will fix that in, in the future revisions. Um, but. I'm, I think I'm just done. I like what they've done. I, I'm satisfied with the transparency that they gave us. Uh, I'm not angry about anything that they're collecting. Some of it's a little confusing because I just am not a developer, so I don't know 100% why they need that type of data. But in the end, it's just, it's not bad. So I'm done. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I, I, I want, I, I challenge you to read through this. I'll link to this in the description. I challenge you to read through it. Go through every single line, look at everything they're collecting and try to imagine to yourself how the points that they're collecting could possibly be used against you in any way. I challenge you for this because I would like to know because even though I don't see it one way, maybe somebody out there is gonna see it another way. And if you see a data collection point that you think is, is harming or damning to you and for whatever reason, tell me about it in the comments. Tell me why you think it is that way. And I'm not doing this just to get people to comment on my video. I'm seriously, if you come up with reasons why you think certain data collection points are gonna be bad and you comment down those uh, below, 
I will probably talk to Plex about it. I say, look, man, th this guy, he brought this up. And you know, I didn't even think about this before, but dude, you could bring back dinosaurs and I could die. So if that's a thing, if you have something, tell me about it. If I have a concern, I'll shoot some emails. But before I close, I'll also, I'll, I wanna address one more thing. And that is when they originally stopped the checkbox of opting out of data collection, they, when they originally removed that, that was shooting themselves in the foot, but, I understand exactly why they did it. I think that Plex, they just, I think they felt like maybe in a sense, kind of like what I mentioned before, they are lying to customers. They are saying, hey, this box is like four or five data collection points out of like a hundred. So I think they just felt like it was like they're being liars by keeping that box there. And since they were taking this new focus on, on privacy and they wanted to address this, that was like the first, like there's like the red flag, like, you know what? This thing is actually not doing much. We, we have to take this out. We can't give people a false sense of security. Now, I'm not saying that removing the box and like put, sending everybody into panic was the thing to do, but I'm just saying I understand why it was done like that, uh, or I understand why it was done, maybe not just like that. But hey, hopefully all of this will be put behind us real quick. Again, comment below. If you like this video, like this video. Uh, if you love this video, subscribe. If you hate this video, give me a thumbs down and tell me in the comments why you disagree with me. You know, I actually really wanna know, you know, why some people might be panicking over the new policy, you know. So if you have any comments, definitely tell me about it below. But all right. Thanks for watching guys. There's actually a new Plex update that came out. There's Plex news. So I'm going to start working on that video after I edit this. So everyone have a fantastic night.